Hey there everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. We are going to do this again. This time we're going to talk to this lady. Let's let, let's have a chit chat with her, shall we? Click on Adan. There we go. I love grass type Pokemon. Do you have any grass type Pokemon? Oh, you like grass type Pokemon too, don't you? I'm so happy. Oh, as a token of her friendship, well our friendship I suppose now, I'm probably going to forget her as soon as I walk away. She will give us a TM called TM Giga Drain. It's a base 60 move and it works the same way as Absorb and Mega Drain. We will steal a portion of the, well, we do uh, damage to the Pokemon and we steal a portion of that HP and put it back onto our HP bar. So it's a recovery move and it's a damaging move as well. I think it's 50% uh, recovery, not too sure though. So feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I doubt that I am because I am so awesome at this game. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a big episode here. This is going to be a very big exploration video because there is quite a lot of things that we need to do. We need to tie up some loose ends. By the way, I'm just raising the PP of that Giga Drain by a little bit using a PP up because Giga Drain's PP is only 5, so what it will do is it will raise it from 5 to 6. It, every PP up raises it um, by 20%, so on a 5 PP move you would get 1 per PP up, and the maximum you can have is 60%, so you can go from 5 to 8. So you use 1 PP, that's an extra 20%, which is uh, 1, then you do it again, then you do it again, and and then you can't use any more PP ups. Obviously, if it's a 40, um, if it's a 40 PP move, you will get a lot more from that one PP up. But anyway, we've just faced a Geo dude, and you're probably thinking, hmm, Upstar finally used Steel Wing. Hooray, he's made me so happy. Yeah, I thought to myself, this Geo dude had the nerve to uh, stand in my way, so we might as well kick his ass with Steel Wing. Now, the next thing we're going for is actually the fossil. Remember when they were talking about fossils back in, uh, ooh, I can't remember. Lava Ridge, was it? Lava Ridge or something like that. That town, anyway. We're going after the fossil. Stardust, by the way, is kind of like Nugget. You can sell it for a lot of money, so feel free to collect them, they are quite valuable when you find them. We do find a Cacnea though in the desert, and Cacnea is a grass type Pokemon that evolves into a grass and dark type Pokemon. Defensively, not too great, however its evolved form is very good offensively on both ends, so, um, a physical attack and special attack, although I think its um, special attack is a bit better because it has a lot more special attacks. But here are the two fossils you can have, and you can only have one of them. The game lets you know that you can only have one of them by saying that if you pick one, the other will sink into the ground. That's our darn luck, isn't it? Why can't we just dig them both up? We can either have the Root Fossil or the Claw Fossil. The Root Fossil will give us a Pokemon called Lilip, which is a rock and grass type Pokemon, a very uh, defensive type Pokemon, or you can go for the Claw one, which is uh, Anorith, which is a rock and bug type Pokemon. Much more offensive, but very slow. I like defensive Pokemon by nature, so we, uh, we take the Root one, we say bye-bye to the claw one and we'll get that resurrected in this episode I will show you where but whilst we're near whilst we're actually at the desert we can actually get another TM that I actually want and it's actually in the fiery path now you remember when we first went through the fiery path we couldn't move the rocks because we didn't have um, strength we didn't have HM strength or we didn't have the badge for HM strength or something like that well now that we have a Sharpedo and now we have strength and now that we have the badge to use strength we can actually get the TM in here however if you are also having trouble finding a fire stone you can find one in here I'll show you where it is now all you need to do is push these rocks thankfully it's not a puzzle very simple <laughs> thankfully <laughs> just don't push this all the way to the end or you will be stuck come up here you will get TM6 I want to say 6 for some reason 6 there we go TM6 which is toxic toxic will put the poison status on your opponents and they will gradually lose more and more and more HP as the uh, battle goes on and I'm gonna teach this to Ludicolo over nature power. Why? I'm sick of nature power. It has no use for me now because I've got all those uh, power moves. But however, if there is something that does resist um, I, I, either a couple of my power moves on Ludicolo or even all of them, I will use Toxic and Toxic will help kill the Pokemon a lot quicker. It's better for long battles against defensive Pokemon, obviously, because the longer the battle goes, the more Toxic will have effect. However, um, it's still a very good move. It was either that or Rain Dance. Rain Dance would have been awesome as well. However, I went with Toxic just to be a little bit different. People would probably expect Rain Dance, so I went with Toxic instead, just to be cool, because it's cool to be different 
and their difference to be cool. No, that didn't make sense, but what we do find here is the Fire Stone, so if you want to evolve your, your precious Eevee or any kind of Fire Pokemon that evolves via Fire Stone, then use it. A couple of examples, uh, Vulpix. Vulpix evolves via Fire Stone and so does uh, Growlithe. So those are just two examples for you, and also Eevee as well. Now, where do we go next? I have no idea. Is it Rustbury City? Tell me game, tell me game, tell me where I need to go. We go to Rustbury City, of course, because now we need to revive the Pokemon. Now, this is how Pokemon has always worked. You always get two fossils, or in the first one, you, you can actually get three, because you get the Aerodactyl fossil as well. But in this game, you need to come here to resurrect your fossil, and you need to go to uh, the second floor, I think. I talked to everyone, because again, I wasn't too sure. It's been a while since I've done this. I have I've resurrected the fossil before, but it's been a while. Is it the second floor? Indeed it is. Now you talk to this guy, and this is interesting. I'm trying to develop a device that visually reproduces dreams of Pokemon. And I like this, because in Generation 5, they've actually released something which does that, the Dream World function. So, bit of foreshadowing there. Predicting the future. This game is, is you know, a prophet. It's predicting the future. It's fantastic, I tell you. But if you give the dude in the bottom right-hand corner the fossil, and then wait for four hours, which which that was, obviously, you can come back and he will give you the Pokemon uh, which was in the fossil, in the Pokemon that I've just told you about, Lilip. As ever, as I just told you, rock and grass type Pokemon, very defensive, really defensive, a very good Pokemon in my opinion anyway. Let's just take a quick look, it's Naughty Nature, all my Pokemon seem to be Naughty Nature these days, but it does have, uh, Naughty Nature will give it a raised attack, it will lower its special defense, Suction Cups is another bad ability as well, it will stop Roar and Whirlwind and moves like that from work and it can't be removed from battle forcibly. You can remove it yourself, but you can't. it can't be removed forcibly by your opponent. So it's a decent ability. Um, I like it. I like the Pokemon. So, you know, if you want a little leap, go for it. And if it's okay as well, but I just find it a bit too slow. It's strong, but it's just a little bit too slow for me. But finally, after all that exploration, guys, it is time to finish the game. We're in end game now. It is officially end game. We need to get to, I, I suppose, the final city of the game where the Elite Four is. Oh, it's been a long twisted road, guys. We've done so much in such a little time. We have we have surfed the world, we have been a postman, we have seen so many sights, we've destroyed the gym leader setup. Oh, it, it's it's been a great um, it's been a great journey, and now it all ends here. We have a long route to sail here, and again, I wasn't totally sure where it was. All I needed to all I knew was I needed to go down and right. So every time I got the chance to go down, I went down, which sounds wrong, but what can you do? And every time I had the chance to go right, I went right, and it actually backfired on me because I get into this little. Um, lagoon kind of area which is all very closed off and that is not where you should be so I get, I get out of it pretty quickly. I was I felt a bit stupid doing that but it was a nice little trip. I, it was fun going in circles because going in circles is always fun. But yes, just go down and then go right and you will be there. We're getting there guys. Are you feeling nervous for me? <laughs> I know I am. Uh, excuse me. See I've got the nervous burps already. But anyway, my repels keep wearing off, and unfortunately, I have no more left. So hopefully we'll run into no more random battles, but I'm quite confident that we will. Indeed we do. What are we, what are we gonna take on? We're gonna take on a Pelipper. Do I actually take on a Pelipper? I don't like facing Pelippers. Far too strong, far too strong defensively. Even with Swellow on the verge of leveling up, I don't want to face that Pelipper. But here we are. Evergrande City, and Evergrande City is the home of the Elite Four. Why couldn't have we gone to the Elite Four straight away? Well, obviously we need the eight badges, but also there's a big-ass waterfall in the way. What a great mecha mechanism to deter burglars. Oh, we can't rob from Evergrande City because there's a giant waterfall there. Oh, if only we had a Pokemon which knew, knew waterfall. No, we can't have a Pokemon that knew waterfall because all we have are Poochiennas, goddamn Team Aqua. <laughs> But anyway, as my voice starts to crap out, unfortunately, here we are. We take we take one last rest at the Pokemon Center, we heal up, and we're feeling nervous, guys, because before every single Pokemon League, there is Victory Road. That's right, guys. Victory Road is a cave 
which um, it mirrors our journey itself. It's long and it's tough. It is a tough, long cave that we have to get through. It's full of trainers, it's full of puzzles, it's a long, long cave. It's not like Pokemon Silver where it's basically just run through it and you're there. This one is a toughie and I don't appreciate it because I don't like Victory Road. It's a good addition, I just don't like it personally. But here it is, the final challenge before the Elite Four. Let's do this, guys. Now, unfortunately, I don't feel I have enough time to get through it straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a mini explore and look around for some Pokemon, look around for what we have, and we see a cute little Aaron. Ah, it, it looks dirty though, doesn't it? Let's give it a wash. Uh, oh, protect! You don't want to be cleaned. Oh no, that's fine. No, you know what? I'll wash you now. I'll, I'll wash. I'll wash you now. That because you still look dirty. I'll just wash you now. Uh, oh, oh my God! Stop! Stop saying no! Damn it! I'm trying to be nice here by giving you a clean, and you say no to me twice. Oh, you've had it now, bloody curl! I'll surf it to hell. <laughs> Poor Aaron. Oh well. Yes, uh, that Aaron had to die. No one protects at me twice. If they protect at me twice, they are going down. <laughs> But we do have a battler up here, which we'll have to wait, unfortunately, because of a random battle, and we take on a Wizma. Remember Wizma all those episodes ago when I made the mistake of saying the uproar was even remotely like Bullet Seed? No, it's, it's nothing like Bullet Seed. <laughs> I still can't believe I said that. I don't know why I said that. I think I was drunk or something. But yes, let's continue the game as we take on our first cool trainer. There's loads of them. Cool trainer Hope, and we take on a Rosalia. Now, Liddy Curler would usually struggle against a Rosalia. Rosalia, because Rosalia being having the poison typing that it has, would able to be to get the super effective move on us. However, we have Ice Beam. It tries to use Grass Whistle, which is a decent move. It will put us to sleep. A rather inaccurate move, which can put us to sleep. Uh, but as I said, very inaccurate. So Grass Whistle will always miss. Well, pretty much miss all the time anyway. So I don't recommend it on a Rosalia unless you're feeling really lucky. <laughs> Anyway, we move on and we go down these ladders and we, we see we come to a bit of a, a dark cave and this cave sucks. I hate this bit because I don't find any use in this bit. There's two rocks and you push one and it, and one road leads to the other and it you know it just feels kind of irrelevant, kind of pointless, and I don't like it, and it confuses me for a while, first time I look around, because I push one rock and then the other, and then I'm, I'm led back to these uh, ladders, and, you know, I'm like, what did that achieve? So I thought, there must be more to it, let's go back down there. So I go to the other rock, and then I push that, and then it just leads me to the same place, and I'm like, oh, if only I had flash so I could see where the hell I was going. <laughs> but yeah, I think... The, the thing is, I actually see a bit of land there. You jump from the right to the left. It's a little cliff. So I actually think that it's actually um, um, the bottom part of a cliff where you can jump down to it. So it's not that crazy after all. But we do face a brand new Pokemon, the evolved form of Makahita. This is Hariyama. And look how big his hands are. I love them. Awesome Pokemon design. I love it. It's a little bit crazy. It uses a move called Knock Off, and Knock Off is a base 20 Dark type move. And in a trainer battle, it will remove my item for the duration of the battle. So I can't use Miracle Seed now. My Grass type moves are instantly weakened, and that is pretty bad. However, I'm just using Surf. Harry Yama is a strange one in that it actually has a very good HP statistic. Um, it's very good defensively. Matchamp is kind of defensive in the same way, but Harry Yama takes it to a brand new level. He's also very strong as well. That's the added bonus. A very high physical uh, attack stat. Golbat, you all know Golbat, that was that happy little Pokemon. Do you remember when the first generation, when its sprite had that big long tail and it just looked uber weird? Well, now it actually looks pretty cool with its happy mouth going, ah, rah, 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 rah. Well, it just used Confuse Ray on this. And now we're confused and we'll probably hit ourselves, but guess what? We don't! And we hit it with Ice Beam and Golbat is sent packing, hopefully. No, it survives. God damn it, what is wrong with this cave? I'm scared already. It uses Bite, a very low attack move, and it causes us to flinch. Cut. And we can't even escape as well. I hate Victory Road already. What is wrong with this place? So I have no choice just to kill it. Earth Cutter, by the way, is a base 55 flying type move, but it has a raised critical hit ratio. And finally, we snap out the confusion, and we can Ice Beam it to death. Thank the Lord. Stupid Golba. You know, I hate Zubats, and now I hate Golbats. Add Golbats to the list. I hate all bats. All bats can go to hell. 
Anyway, I think we have one more wild battle, do we? Indeed we do. And this is against a Makahito, which is the pre-evolved form of Harry Armour, believe it or not. And unfortunately, I am running out of time. So we are going to surf it for a bit. It does use a move called Smelling Salt, by the way, which is a base 60 normal type move, which doubles if it hits a, a target which is paralyzed, but it also cures that paralyzation. However, I'm quickly out running out of time. So we explore the rest of Victory Road next time on Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. See you later, guys.